Yeah, if anybody interested again, I'm just going to do an update on what I've been doing to the Trans Am. Like I said, I'm just I'm kind of burned out on it, but i got Darren help me like once a week, and uh, I'll show where, I'm just going to explain what the issues we found, and that's it. Okay, so I'm just going to walk in on the car here. So, we pulled the gate, we pulled the gauge, some of the gauges out again, because the oil, I mean the oil, let's see. The tack wasn't working. Uh, so I'm trying to think now. The tack wasn't working. The temperature wasn't working. Uh, I don't know. It seems to me something else. But anyway, this wire right here. This is the sending unit for the temperature. It just it was on there, but for some reason, we just had to put it on and off, on and off, and all of a sudden the sending unit started working. But we pulled it and checked it to see if it would work first. So that was that was bad. Let's see. Uh, the tack wasn't working. It turns out that the wiring harness underneath, we had to go down. He went underneath. I can't do it anymore. Part of the harness wasn't hooked up, so we plugged that in and the tack started working. Let's see. Uh, The power steering, I'm just looking at what he did here. He disconnected the negative battery cable. Let me think. He disconnected the negative battery cable. I'm thinking to myself, he disconnected it. But if it's hitting the ground, that's weird. I'm just thinking to myself, we started the car, but the negative cable was disconnected, I think, or else he disconnected just before I left. Anyway, uh, two of the, uh, one of the uh, hoses at the bottom of the power steering was le uh, loose, that was leaking. This brake was leaking. That brake was leaking. There's still a couple drips. It might be because of all the fluid. I think it is because it's it's away from the from all the fluid that was on the hose. Because it's away from the uh, the bleed valve. And so the problem with the brakes was uh, we replaced these rubber washers and tightened the heck out of them. I'm trying to think what else. So, uh, anyway, there's a leak right there. I don't know what that is. I just, I'm just keep checking for leaks. There's a couple drips here. Again, that could be because we bleed it, bled it. Um, you know, just a bunch of little stuff. Started the engine again. Started fine. Oh. Uh, so now I'll take it up in the air. Well, before I take it up in the air, I got this is another one of my stupid videos, but uh, back to the Ranger. I pulled the carpet out because it was wet in some areas. Got a fan blowing in there. So before I put the carpet back in, I'll just close the doors and I'll pour water on here and see if I can figure out where it's leaking. Maybe it's leaking here. I don't know. Or maybe somebody... Who knows? That's what, that's the reason. I pulled it because you can never dry it out completely. I'm going to order the new carpet because that one's just shot. The pad's okay. And I'll take the car up in the air. Oh yeah, and then I got, it's been raining like here every day for like three weeks, and it's May. So I got to mow this whole stinking lawn, long, which takes about two and a half hours. You know, all the way up to my house. I'll lift the car. 
anyway, you know, it is kind of nice to have this on the lift over concrete because I can see where the leaks are. So, let's see. Either these ball joint seals are no good or whatever, I lube those. Because it was hard to turn. Same on this side. The uh, radiator line, the transmission lines into the radiator weren't tight, so it's good. So that's what that that's what some of these drips are. <clears throat> and you can see some antifreeze. So the point is, I guess what I'm saying is some of these leaks will keep leaking. Even though even though the car has been sitting overnight, because it's just it's just hanging up in sp spots. But the main leak was this and this this accumulator. I'll talk about that in a second. But I just put a rubber hose on it. It's it's not leaking, but it, I didn't make this hose long enough. I need to I need to tuck this hose back up under the here somehow. Probably with one of these. Uh, I'm not gonna put metal hose on her. It's just too much trouble. Let's see. I'm gonna put a clip like this. You can see here's the one on the front. I'm gonna put one over on, off the oil pan gasket so I can hold this back away from this exhaust. See how close it is? But the leaks are gone. Now this accumulator, what do they call it? It's got a snap ring that holds it on right here. You can see that. Get this light working better. Anyway, you got a snap ring. It goes all the way around. Then this pops out and there's a oil seal in there that had been put on a little bit off but the way to get that snap ring off the easy way I'll show you you see that little hole Let's see if I can point at it again I hope I'm up high enough that little hole right there if you put a pick in there you can push the snap ring out and then you can grab it. Let's see what else is loose. So yeah, just little leak, just little drips. So some of these drips, let's see if I look at this drip right here. I'm, I'm near the rear brake. I don't know where that's, that's coming from because it's not coming from the brake. This one here, I'm just gonna go straight up. The oil filter wasn't tight, believe it or not. I mean, it was tight, but it wasn't all the way tight. Little things like that. This wasn't completely tight. Somebody get, sent a comment said that wasn't tight oh well, you're right there was a few drips there too so I'm just going to take this clip here and bend it get on my oil pan and hang those tubes off of there or make something So I'm just gonna wait for Darren to come back. Like I said, I'm just burned out on this car for a while. Well, there was one weird thing is that we were, we fired up the engine again. And there was a lot of smoke coming out in the engine compartment, you know, right behind, right behind the carburetor, right, you know, down towards the trans tunnel. We kept smoking and smoking, but we couldn't see an oil leak from on top. 
So we went down underneath. And I think it was Darren or me left left a wet a wet rag on with transmission fluid right here. It was getting sucked right up into the engine compartment. So we get rid of that. And yeah, I put this back together. I don't know if I said it, but. Uh, it hasn't overheated, but I haven't tested it since. But then I put it together and the hose, the oh, this hose right here, where it hooks to the, the bottle, there wasn't a clamp when I took it apart. Uh, so I put, a, I put a clamp on there down here so maybe, maybe this car, they said it was an overheating problem. Maybe it was because that was loose and it was leaking. And every time it got hot, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, I put it back together. That's it. And then I got the exhaust tips that are, they're not on here. I guess uh, Justin took them off. They're around here somewhere. But besides that, my fuel lines aren't leaking. Oh yeah, and the fuel gauge isn't working. So, Darren says he has another fuel gauge at home. We're gonna try that. I mean, I'm pretty sure my sending unit's okay. Anyway, that's where we are. If you're interested, that's it. So I get. I always say that's it, but I was thinking. If you watched that last video, I was thinking it was the transmission gasket. But when I looked close, it was the accumulator rubber O-ring. And it's about, it's almost a little bit smaller than that. I threw it away. It was just put in wrong. So, that's it. For sure, for now. I'm gonna go mow the lawn, maybe I'll think of some other stuff.